hi guys welcome back to my channel this is gonna be a little bit different than i am doing before but i did want it to go into a bit of a story time while i got back on my sims building bullshit being 29 years old and being able to make friends is a gift and a curse you know as of the older you get the more you realize that people's lives are busy everybody has a different schedule things don't really work out and not only that but everybody has different beliefs and you know opinions that make them different from everybody else so you know with that being said let's dive into this juicy story on how i put myself out there to make friends and gained a stalker instead this story took place about three to four years ago and it all started with my husband and i decided that we wanted to get out there and make couple friends you know my husband and I have been together for almost 11 years, so we decided that we really wanted to make friends as a couple because that's kind of hard. Also, a little bit weird. People are fucking weird when it comes to their relationships, so we get it, you know? You kind of have to pick and choose the quality of people that you want to bring into your life. So we decided to give it a chance. So this couple, you know, I was really excited because it just kind of seemed like they had a lot of, um, you know, likes and things in mutual. Like my husband and I, we had a lot of things in common. So we decided to give it a go and hang out with these folks. So fast forward, we decide to do our first hangout at their place. And, you know, nothing weird. Everything went as according to plan. They invited us over to eat. They cooked for us. We ate, we smoked, we vibed, we talked about, you know, psychedelics and all these things that we've done together, our likes, our dislikes, etc. Now, for the people that know me know that I just absolutely love talking people's heads off. It's a gift and a curse. It's something that I just do when I'm kind of nervous. So I just continue to talk and talk and talk. And so... You know, in the conversations that we were having as we were smoking, I was just really kind of sitting there talking everybody's heads off. And it kind of seemed like they were receptive to, you know, the information that we were sharing with them. But at some point in the conversation, you could really see where the husband was a little bit more into the conversation than the wife. It kind of seemed like she had, a, um, you know, disassociated in a way from the conversation which is fine you know some people when they smoke it happens they disassociate and they tap out of the conversation so that's honestly what I thought it was I read it as you know we're all just kind of stoned we just ate you know we're vibing out whatever so we end up wrapping the night for what it was we left their house um you know I left the hangout for what it was. It, I kind of felt good about it. I didn't really get any weird vibes from the first impression other than, of course, you know, the wife kind of disassociating a little bit in the conversation, which I didn't read it as red flags. I just was like, OK, you know, whatever. It happens. Some people are like that when they smoke. No biggie, right? So we decided to make plans for a second hangout because, you know, we, we want to test the waters out. And, you know, we, we thought that the first hangout went successfully. So we decided that we wanted to do a part two of this hangout. So we went over to a brewery in our local area and, you know, called them up and was like, hey, guys, come meet us up at this brewery. Let's hang out, have some drinks, etc." So they came out. Uh, we also had other, uh, other friends of ours show up. I had my brother come out and one of his uh, lifelong best friends also showed out. So it turned out to be more of a group of people versus just, you know, us couples hanging out. Now the night is unraveling for what it is. You know, we're all having drinks. We're having fun. We're chit chatting. We're talking. You know, it's a group of like about uh, six of us individuals were sharing our beliefs, our ideologies, jokes, all that good stuff. And, you know, mind you, when you're meeting new people, you obviously always have to test the waters as to what kind of things they want to talk about, what kind of things their normal 
lightly like to speak whatever the case may be so you know i love to get people to kind of open up on their own by asking them questions etc so this is what that night was we were just all talking vibing and speaking in a group of friends you know nothing weird happened everything was great um you know we had our drinks i'm pretty sure we wrapped up the night by around like either nine or ten that night and we all went our separate ways again nothing weird everything went down smoothly you know no one got any weird vibes no one said anything out of place whatever so the next day or a couple days later the wife and i decide to make plans to go hiking um you know at a really close mountain nearby we make plans to you know what mountains we're gonna meet at we're discussing logistics via text message so i was replying to her a little bit you know delayed because that day we was mexican mother's day and so i was out and about with my family i don't really like to be on my phone uh you know as often when i'm with my family because i'm one of those people that zone out when they're on their phones and so just to be respectful to my family i just put my phone away and it does not exist to me while i am out and about and enjoying my family time so i didn't get a chance to respond to her text messages until the very next day mind you the plans that we were making for the mountains to go hiking was not going to be until that following Friday. So we had days in advance to plan. So I didn't really think much of it. Uh, you know, when I took my time responding to her text messages, responding about the logistics, you know, where we were going to meet at, whose car we were going to use, etc. So I respond to her the very next day and she's being extremely short with her replies. Mind you, I don't really take it in personal. I know that people work and they have a life and, you know, not everybody responds quickly. I'm one of those people who, you know, take forever to respond to text messages. So I didn't really think much of it. Fast forward to the day that, you know, we're supposed to meet to go to the mountains, to go hike. This person has gone absolutely ghost. Like they are not responding to my text messages days even before I had not been responding to my text messages. In my head, I'm just like, okay, maybe there's something wrong. Maybe they're going through something that they're not going to be able to make it. So I don't think much of it. But the day of what was weird was that, you know, she decided to text me in the middle of the day and say, well, we came to the mountains without you because your lack of response basically told me that you were not interested in making it out to the trip. And I'm just kind of baffled at this point because, you know, I had already agreed to the plans beforehand and, you know, we had already made logistics, etc. So I'm kind of just blown away here at the day of that, you know, they decide to just go to the mountains on their own and then pettily respond to my text messages after days by saying, oh, well, we decided to come on our own because your no response basically told me you were not interested. And I just didn't really get mad. I didn't feel any type of way because I was taking accountability for my lack of response. I know that some people function that way. And so I did apologize to them and was like, you know, I'm sorry. I hope that you guys enjoy yourself in the mountains. You know, we can rain check on this whole hike again later on, may on a day that works for you know all of us doesn't respond to my text message when it comes to you know the rain check and you know i'm still being ghosted fast forward i look on my facebook and i see that she blocked me on facebook and i'm just like wait a minute what did i do that deserved me to get blocked so my husband lets me in on a little tea that the husband shared with him that his wife was very upset that i was not you know replying at a timely manner and that you know she did feel some type of way in me not quickly you know giving her the energy that she felt entitled to now i feel like as the partner is this is kind of where he messed up because you know as couples and relationships we're supposed to have each other's backs but he kind of threw his wife under the bus by you know letting us know that you know, she was feeling some type of way and that she was acting in spite uh, for my lack of response. So at that point, you know, I'm kind of just extremely turned off by all of this because I just felt, you know, like no one should feel entitled to your energy, especially so early on in a 
relationship, especially platonic. And so I felt like I needed to take a step back and take the signal for what it was, which, you know, blocking me on Facebook is ultimately to me like, hey, you know, fuck you. I no longer want anything to do with you. So duly noted, right? Moving forward for about a year and a half to two years, uh, I started going viral on my art page, on Instagram, Facebook, all of my content started taking off. Um, So I think at this point in time, I re-entered this person's algorithm. Whether they had me blocked on my personal Facebook didn't fucking matter because I was ending up on people's uh, reels suggestion. I wasn't I was probably popping up on this person's explore page for all I know. So I get this weird message in my art page by someone asking me, hey, are you homophobic? And I'm just like shook by the question. So I was taken aback. I was like, what? Huh? Who are you? What is this? What's going on? Like zero context. But at the end of the day, this person went in depth and provided receipts, a.k.a. screenshots. And to my surprise, who do I see? In the screenshots, this person who I haven't talked to in about two years is going on an art page that was sharing one of my memes and telling this page to not support me because I was a homophobic individual and to not support me because I am not an ally of the LGBT community. And so I was in shock. I was like, what the fuck is happening? First of all, I haven't talked to this person in God knows how fucking long. And I do not understand where this information is coming from. So obviously I'm blocked on everywhere. I cannot reach out to her to confront this bitch because, you know, they have taken the coward route to blocking me and not letting me you know confront them with this information i reach out to her husband who i still had on my facebook for some reason and i you know sent him the screenshots and i was like dude what the fuck you need to get your wife because i do not understand the reason why she's coming at me with these false accusations the husband tries to act like He has zero control over anything and says, oh, I'm sorry, Carrie. I do not have power or control over what my wife does and say. So basically, you know, taking the high route and saying, fuck you. I don't give a fuck. My wife can be conniving if she wants to be. I have nothing to do with this, which is sad ultimately, you know, because when someone is coming out to you and reaching out and telling you that your partner is slandering someone's name out of pure spite and pettiness, I think that would kind of make me see this person in a weird and a different light because you are ready to demean and take someone's character down just because they didn't respond to your text message in a timely manner. I am fucking shocked. Ultimately, I had to choose between being the bigger person or choosing to let her, you know, take my energy at that moment. And so I decided to not do anything about it. I screenshotted all of the information. I shared it in my personal Facebook, letting my friends know what this person was doing, as well as replying to the person who had reached out to me on my art page by letting them know that this person, you know, was mentally unstable and had a evil vendetta against me purely out of a whole situation that could have been avoided. Fast forward, It becomes a norm for this girl to literally look up my art page memes to whatever Facebook page or Instagram is sharing and commenting that I am a homophobic person due to a conversation that, mind you, she made up. Now, the story was that she was leaving in the comments was that apparently the night, the day that we had went out for drinks, mind you, the day that I told you guys, my brother and his friend joined us, that I had a little bit too much to drink and that apparently I let out my true feelings about homophobia and that I apparently said that women and men are meant to be and that is what God said. Now, I grew up in an extremely toxic religious household. And again, anyone that knows me knows how deeply traumatized I grew up in a Christian household. So those words would literally never leave my mouth. The fact that when I read that, I was just literally like throwing up in my mouth because again, growing up traumatized by religion, that is something that I would rather spend a long time in hell before saying, basically. And it just kept going. It kept getting worse. Not only was she attacking me, 
she started attacking my sister, now started making up things about that my sister was homophobic. Now my whole family was homophobic. Mind you, we have LGBTQ people in my family, so, you know, crazy. The demeaning of the character and slandering just keeps going on and on, and honestly, it still continues to this very day. I choose not to give this person the energy that she wants, which is, you know, she ultimately wants me to act out of character, but what I wish for her is nothing but the best. I really hope that this person heals from whatever it is that they're going through so that they don't have to pick me as their escape go for what they're going through. I definitely take responsibility for, you know, what happened in this situation, but I ultimately do not believe that the actions require those kind of consequences at no point in time should you ever take the energy to slander someone's name just because things did not work out for them so this is my story on how i gained a cyber stalker and still continue to have this stalker so pray for me y'all forget to like comment and subscribe and if you guys would like to see more of my sims build videos while telling stories please feel free to leave that in the comments so see you next time